Hey guys, Ben and Pat here. Uh, today is Saturday. Uh, this is going to be the longest day for me. Um, I've got six bands to see, two venues. Um, yeah, th this is going to be a very, very difficult day because I will be the last bit. The last band that I want to see, Necrophobic, ends at like 1:30 in the morning. So, and it is currently eight in the morning. So. <laughs> Uh, today's gonna be a very, very long day, so I'll shut up. Let's get at it. So my day started just like every other day did, just by walking around the city. And there was a whole bunch that I had to do. Um, I missed the Saturday br brunch that was going on at Soundstage that day. So I ended up going to Dunkin' Donuts for breakfast. Smart decision. But it was better than just going to shows on an empty stomach. Now this I found a bit ironic. Right next to the lingerie and sex shop it was a mission. Absolutely found that hilarious. Ah yes, definitely reminding me of my times from high school. Some weaves lying around on the sidewalk. There was definitely signs of a struggle. And now it was finally time to start getting ready for shows. And I started with some Chicago homies in cardiac arrest. After watching a good portion of Cardiac Arrest, it was time to get started on watching the first band that I actually came to see, Drawn and Quarter. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, it's always important to maintain exercise, even at a metal show. So I want to take a moment and talk about this photo right here. This kid was had his first ever metal show, and it was at Maryland Death Fest. The frontman for November's Doom, the band that the dad wanted to see very badly, came up to him and asked for a photo and wanted to say, Oh, you really made my day by wanting to come and see us. This is so awesome. So they ended up taking a couple of photos together. I only took that one. I thought that was just super wholesome to see. Which is funny because the next band that I went to go see was November's Doom. Ah yes, November's Doom, another great Chicago band. Last time I saw these guys was when they had an album listening party for their newest album at a brewery that used to be by my old apartment complex. Unfortunately, around after they got done playing, that was when I was just insanely sunburned and just super, super tired. So I ended up going back to my hotel for just a little bit, just to take a little bit of a snooze and a prep prep myself up for the next few bands that followed. However, what I did miss during that time was a very famous clip that was going around during Autopsy set because Autopsy and Trypticon ended up switching places. And 
I'm not going to show you what it is, but a hint of what came from that is the thumbnail for this video. And as you can see, I made it back as the sun was starting to set. Now, it was time to see one of the bands that really got me super excited to come to this after the numerous delays and numerous band replacements. It was time to see Triptychon. And there he is. The man, the myth, the legend, the king of... <coughs> Tom G. Warrior. It was so cool to finally see Triptychon and Tom G. Warrior live. And the fact that he was doing Circle of the Tyrants, his own song for this, was absolutely nothing short of amazing. This was absolutely a lifelong dream come true. Especially because I had gotten into Triptychon um, in 2014, and they tied for the best album of the year along with Fallujah's The Flesh Prevails. But after that, that was the end of Edison Lot for the night. So I ended up going elsewhere next to Ram's Head to go see Necrophobic. But I did also get to catch some of Deez of Flesh's set, so that was really cool. Unfortunately, because of Triptychon's time change, I did unfortunately miss Suffering Hour, and while I did see them, I didn't capture footage of Uwada, who played after them. But, now it was time to go see Necrophobic. Yet another band that I got to cross off my bucket list. These guys were absolutely insane. It was such a pleasure to finally, finally see these guys. Knowing that most likely I will never be able to see these guys ever again because I there's no way that I could ever go to something like Vakken or Bloodstock or something like that where these guys typically tend to play because I think they're just a festival band. Which is fine, but yeah, there's no way I'm going to be able to see them live. And with that, day three was a wrap. The longest day of the fest for me was finally over. I couldn't wait to get back and just sleep for the entire day. Because, holy crap, that sunburn definitely killed me. So, it was time to finally head back to the hotel and just go to sleep and prepare for the final day.